do you have um, like target mac macronutrient mix, like high carb, low carb, high fat? I mean, do, do you have what's your kind of go to there? Yeah, so so I can tell you my research and then I can tell you what I do, which okay. they're two different things. Okay. So so we did a we did a study in in mice um, with John Ramsey, who's a colleague of mine here, and he's. He's probably the best person in the world to do longevity studies in mice. And what he did, um, what we did is we took animals that were 12 months of age. So, you know, young middle-aged animals uh, and we put them onto a ketogenic diet, a low carb diet or a standard control diet. And what we found is that the low carb diet increased lifespan non-significantly about 6%. Uh, the, the ketogenic diet increased lifespan significantly at 13%. And so, so that was really interesting. Um, the, the more interesting things there were that um, at, when we looked at the animals at 26 months of age, the ones that were on a ketogenic diet, not the low carb diet, but the ketogenic diet actually showed improved neurocognitive function, improved muscle strength, improved muscle endurance and bigger muscles. So you weren't seeing the loss in muscle mass with age. Okay. So, I've already, so that, you know, to us that shows that there, there can be a real benefit to these ketogenic type diets. And again, these are diets that are very low in carbohydrate. And as you said, the reason, one of the reasons for this, and especially in our study, is that um, rodents die, especially mice, they die from cancer. So in our control animals, eight of the 10 animals died from cancer. In our ketogenic animals, two of the animals died from cancer. So what you're looking at is if 80% if of the individuals are dying from cancer, then a ketogenic diet where you're decreasing, as you said, mTOR activity throughout the whole body because there's no carbohydrate there. And the carbohydrate provides one of the two signals that's important for activating mTOR. So there's the two signals are gonna be the carbohydrate's gonna provide an insulin-based signal that's important for activating mTOR. And the protein is going to provide it, this leucine-based signal that activates mTOR. When those two things happen together, you get really high mTOR. When one of them happens only, you don't get as much mTOR activity. So there's two diets that look really good in rodents for increasing lifespan. One is a low-protein diet, and the other is a low-carbohydrate diet. Because again, both of them are minimizing mTOR globally throughout the body. Right. So, so when we're looking to do that, when, um, so in our study, when we looked at it, we found that in the liver, sure enough, mTOR activity was significantly depressed in these animals that had been on a ketogenic diet for a long time. And so the result is that you don't get as much cancer growth. But again, in humans, only 20% of people die from cancer. Of those 20%, 30% of that that amount actually dies from loss of muscle mass, which is this protein called, or this process called cachexia, where disease causes a decrease in muscle mass because the disease state, like a cancer, it needs to build itself. And what it needs to build itself is it needs nutrients like amino acids to build all the proteins the cancer wants. And so what it does is it, it grabs the amino acids from our storage spot and that's, that's your muscle mass. So what you see in a lot of people who have cancer is that they start really getting small and that's, that's cachexia. Um, and, and 30% of all the cancer patients die from the, the loss of muscle mass and strength. So they're no longer able to do their activities that they need to do to survive. So then how do we translate these things into humans? Because we just said that there's this low protein diet that works in, in animals to increase longevity. Interestingly, it seems to work in humans up to age 60. So if you're in a low protein diet and you're under 60, you're less likely to have died uh, until you get to 60. But after 60, you actually, keep, you actually catch up. So if you get it to 60 on this low protein diet, if you're still on that low protein diet for longer, you're actually starting to die faster. Again, because you're losing muscle mass. So now then the other, the other aspect of it is this ketogenic component and there's not enough longevity studies because a ketogenic diet is not easy to maintain for a long period of time um, because you're limiting carbohydrate to say 30 grams to 40 grams a day, which is not easy for most people. 
especially in a family or in in certain in social situations. So so it becomes difficult to maintain that. So all of those things together mean what we're trying to do is we're trying to, as you said, minimize mTOR activity globally. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to try and make sure that when we need mTOR, we have mTOR, mTOR can be turned on. And we need mTOR when we're mounting an immune response, when we're trying to build our muscles. All of these times we actually, mTOR is required for that. If we have an injury and we need to repair, mTOR is required for that. But overall, we want it to be low. We just want to be able to have activity from time to time. The other thing that can decrease mTOR activity in a lot of tissues is your endurance exercise. And so the way that I do it is I do endurance exercise as a way to reset my mTOR and to keep it low. Because when I'm exercising, I'm out for a run, say, mm -hmm. lots of metabolic stress, lots of metabolic use. Insulin is going down. Amino acids aren't high. So now in my fat, in my liver, in, my, in, in other tissues, mTOR activity is depressed. In my muscles, when I lift weight, mTOR activity goes up. But in the other tissues of my body, the mTOR activity stays low. So you can actually get a global decrease in mTOR by doing endurance exercise. And in fact, um, our most recent research grant was basically suggesting that a ketogenic diet increases lifespan the same way that an a, a, a endurance exercise increases lifespan. And it's by modulating mTOR activity and how, much, how many mitochondria you have in your muscle. Because these are the types of things that, that are going to be really important for longevity. Um, neurocognitive function, all of these different aspects. When we keep mTOR activity low globally by either doing endurance exercise or by, by having something like a ketogenic or a low protein diet, we can decrease all cause mortality. But when we do it in a way that has sufficient protein and when we do it using exercise, we can maintain our muscle mass, keeping mTOR in the other tissues low and we can get the, the, the benefits of both aspects of it, where we can still activate mTOR, but it's normally at a very low level. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little bit complicated, but mm. we think that the, the ketogenic diet is similar to endurance exercise and the adaptations. And the reason is increasing lifespan is that globally we're decreasing mTOR activity. In muscle, we still have enough muscle protein because there's protein in the diet. Mm. To, to maintain the muscle and the muscle functions better and it has it, it, it has improved ability to have other knock-on effects. And we think one of the effects is to improve neurocognitive function as well. Excellent, uh, thank you. So um, so you, you said you were gonna talk about what you do, but but actually uh, that, because I think time is kind of running out. So that would be really good. I mean, if you could talk a little bit about uh, I guess your diet and your exercise and, and what, what you do for, for your health span based on all this studying that you do. Yeah. So I tend to um, not really focus too much on my diet. I do very basic things. Um, the, the most basic things is I try and have, uh, I try and do the, the vegetable component where you're trying to get the, the, the five to 10 fruits and vegetables a day. Mm -hmm. The reason for that, again, is it is going to lower blood pressure for as one of the key things, um, because the, the vegetables are going to have nitrates in them that are going to allow you to decrease blood pressure globally. And that's one of the beneficial effects of that. And then I do try and maintain a, a sufficient protein intake. Mm -hmm. And that means really focusing because it's not hard to do it at dinner time. It's mm -hmm. more hard to do it at breakfast. And, it, you know, and if you're a lot of people, especially when they're busy, don't have time to eat at a different time. So maintaining it kind of every every five hours, four hours to five hours, I'm going to have about for me at 200 pounds and 50 years of age, I'm looking at, a, you know, a little bit more than 25 gram or yeah, 25 grams of protein at these times. And I'll get it in the morning. I'll get it from nuts and from milk. Mm -hmm. um, because I tend to have nuts and, and coffee with uh, a, a latte for, for my breakfast, but that'll get me up to that protein content that I need. Um, and then I use, I use dairy protein mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, I'll do full fat milk and what I'm looking for. And, and it's interesting because full fat milk, actually you, what you find is that people who eat full fat milk or drink full fat milk 
um, or a full fat dairy actually tend to have better insulin sensitivity and better um, and lower body fats than people who drink non-fat. So, so there's interesting studies there as well as they have better muscle mass because some of the fats in milk are actually good for muscle building as well. Um, and so, so what I'll do is if I know that the dinner that I'm having is kind of light on protein, I'll have a glass of milk. If it's, if it's got sufficient protein, I'll have water. So that's kind of what I use to modulate the protein. Um, and then, like I said before, I'll, I run three days a week and I lift three days a week. Um, and so again, what I'm trying to do with my lifting is I'm trying to like, move the, move a weight that's, that's very challenging. Mm -hmm. I'll keep track of it and I'll try and beat what I did the last time. And, um, and I'm just persistent and you just, the, the gains that you make after a long time, they're not gigantic, but eventually you'll get to that next step and it's, it's rewarding. And all of those <laughs> little steps that you make by the time you're in your fifties, now you're, you're actually doing, you know, that you're lifting the same things you were doing 10 years ago or earlier. That's, that's a really big accomplishment at that point. And then you just try and hold on to that as long as you can. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so can you tell people if where they can find out more about what you're doing and what your work is? Yeah, sure. So, so the easiest, um, if, if people are really ex excited to, to go on to, um, to go on to PubMed and to just search for bar B A A R. That's mm -hmm. a very rare spelling of the name. So mm -hmm. there's fewer of those. If you just put in bar and then you put a space and you put in a K, um, I think uh, 135 out of the 136 of them are my, are my articles. So there's not a lot of other K bars. So that's, that's an easy way to see the research. Um, we, uh, I do have, um, I do use Twitter from time to time to keep people up to date with how things are going. I, my, my, um, my handle there is at muscle science. So people can, pe people can look there to see, to see kind of updates on some of the aging research and some of the, um, work that we're doing on, on building muscle and, and maintaining, uh, tendon and, and connective tissue function. Excellent. Thank you. We, we will link to that in the uh, instruction. I mean, in the description. So um, thank you very much, Dr. Barr. And welcome. That was excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.